Hello everyone, Mr. Bean 35000 vr here, and today I'm going to be showing you how you can play DS games online after Nintendo Wi-Fi connection shut down via WiMFi. There has been a brand new exploit found by Shutterbug2000 that makes the process of getting online on DS games incredibly simple, and I'm going to be showing you just how simple it is. Now your requirements are obviously you're going to need some kind of DS to play it on, but it doesn't really matter what kind of DS you have, DS, DS Lite is fine, anything from the DSi family is fine, Anything from the 3DS, new 3DS, 2DS, or new 2DS family is fine. So basically every DS ever invented. And of course you're going to need some game with Wi-Fi connection on it that you want to play, such as Mario Kart DS. And so let me show you exactly what you need to do to get back online. Okay, so what you want to do to get started is take your game, pop it straight into your DS, no need for an action replay or anything like that, power it on and boot the game up. And give me a moment, this won't take long. Let's draw the backlight. Once the game loads, you want to go into the Nintendo Wi-Fi connection settings. Now where that is, vastly depends on the game. In Mario Kart DS, it's down here. Click this, and then you click this button. Now I'm just going to briefly change webcams so I can show you the details, because I'm aware this isn't the sharpest webcam ever invented, so I'll be right with you. So once you've got into the settings, you want to press the big blue button that says Nintendo Wi-Fi Connection Settings here. If you haven't already configured a connection for your DS, you should do that now. Uh, just You do that by clicking one of the ones that has none on it, and then you can search for an access point. Uh, one caveat is that the maximum security that the DS supports is WEP, which not a lot of routers do anymore. It also supports unsecured connections. Uh, but I will talk about that a bit more later. But once you've got a connection configured, uh, what you want to do is scroll down here to the bottom where it says auto obtain DNS and what you want to do is select that one to no. Then you click edit at the primary DNS which is filled in here. Now I want what I want you to do is type the IP address that's written on the first line of the description. Now the reason I want you to type that, that in is because uh, rather than watching what I do in this video is because this IP address may change in the future and I can't edit the video after it's been uploaded but I can edit the description. So with that in mind Go to, the, go to the first line of the description and type it in. But as of the time of posting the video, the IP that you need to enter is 164132441106. Once you've entered that, click the OK button here. And then click OK. That's it. Now click Test Connection. If you spelled everything correctly, it should fire, and you've got the, the thing configured successfully, you should get connection successful. After that what you want to do is click save settings. It says changes to settings have been saved. And that is it. That is actually all you have to do. Now your DS will be able to connect up to WeamFi with no further no further modification. Which I will now demonstrate for you. So back on the menu of Mario Kart DS I'm gonna click Nintendo Wi-Fi connection match. It says do you want to connect? I'm gonna say yes. So it's going to try to connect up now. And, unless the fates betray me, there it is, a successful connection. As a reminder, let me just briefly switch webcams again with you in a moment. Yeah, as a reminder, as you can see, this is the same instance, it's only been gone about a few, a few seconds, but. There is no action replaced inserted still, so this is entirely working without any modification whatsoever. Which is so cool, it defies belief. <laughs> so, you can see the obvious use, you can see the obvious use in this new method. So, I'm hoping that this will be able to propel DS games on Wi-Fi a significant amount. I hope people are enthusiastic to use it, because I'm sure enthusiastic to show it to you. But yes, so if you got error code 60,000 when you were connecting, which is a reasonably common error code on WeamFi. What you'd want, what you want to do is either pick up, get your cartridge out of your DS and pop it into a different DS and do the same process on there, or which will then, when then when you connect, it will ask you if you want to reset your frame code and you say yes, you do want to do that. Or if you only have one DS, what you do is you go back into the Nintendo Wi-Fi connection settings, hit this options button on the left here, then click Erase Nintendo WFC configuration. I don't know how much all of this deletes, but if it deletes your connection, it's reset them back up again. But after it's all successfully set up again, you should just be able to. If you'll get the you'll get the message saying, "Would you like to reset your frame code when you connect up on every cartridge?" And uh, 
that's, that will solve error code 60,000 on DS games. Far simpler than on Wii games, let me tell you. But anywho. You can obtain a list of games that are supported uh, on Wii Fi for Nintendo DS and Wii from the description. Uh, a link to the Wii tutorial in case you... or the, the Wii tutorials, there are several Wii tutorials in case you want to play your Wii games online as well, will also be in the description. So check those out if you're interested. Now let me address the issue of people who uh, do not have a uh, low security connection, like WEP or unsecured. Well, the option you've got a couple of options. My favourite option of all of them is look for an old router, or even perhaps the Nintendo Wi-Fi USB connector. I don't quite know how that thing works, but uh, it acted like a, like a little miniature wireless access point for your computer and relayed your your computer's internet connection to the DS. Uh, which is quite cool. So yeah, if you've got an uns if you've got an old router, get it, wire it to your home router, set it up so it has a uh, web password or no security, and probably stop it from broadcasting its SSID so people can't find it, and then do the same techniques. Uh, go into your settings, enter the settings for your enter the settings to make your connection, and uh, enter the DNS and test it and if it works that's great you've now got a nice setup that you can use whenever and just turn the router just turn that old router off when you're done but if you're not fortunate enough to own an old router there is still another solution but this one I don't like it too much because it's kind of wonky but I will show it to you anyway now one thing to note about all of this is if you are trying to play online on Pokemon Black Pokemon Black 2 Pokemon White or Pokemon White 2, you actually don't need a low security connection for that. If you've got a DSi or a 3DS, uh, you can use you can use WPA connections just fine, which is the standard that I think everyone's using nowadays, or WPA2. They're all supported. Uh, on a DSi, what you need to do is to go into the settings menu and you can configure a connection from in there. It's always the same trick. You just set, when it, when it asks you if you want to have an automatic DNS, you say no, and you enter the IP. Of, uh, that I list, that's in the description is dead. As for using it on a 3DS, well, Pokemon Black, Black 2, White, and White 2 will just take your 3DS's connections. Like, it doesn't use the, it doesn't use this special Nintendo DS area. It can use the uh, Nintendo 3DS connections, which is great. It makes it means that the Gen 5 Pokemon games are exceedingly easy to get online again. You just literally just enter that DNS into your standard 3DS or DSi setup, and you're on. <laughs> Good for you, you know. But yes, as I was saying, if you do need a low security network, this method I'm not particularly keen on, but I will demonstrate it because it might work for some people. My setup is probably not the best for it. Now let me just briefly change over to uh, my other webcam, because this is definitely not going to focus. So yes, the method I'm going to recommend is smartphones. Now smartphones uh, have the ability to create mobile hotspots, and on Android, which is what I'm using here, don't know what version of Android this is because I don't really know all that much about phones, uh, they have the ability to create unsecured networks, which the DS does support. So let me show you briefly how to set one of those up on a phone. So what you want to do is first go into your settings, click mobile hotspot and tethering. Then you click the mobile hotspot up top. Then you click more. Then you click Configure Mobile Hotspot, the second button here. Enter a name that is easy to remember, so I put in DS Test. Make sure to tick the Hide My Device button, because it's going to be an unsecure network and you don't want just anyone connecting to that. Then in the security, make sure it's set to Open. Once you've done that, click Save. Next, click on this, and click on the Created Connection here, and, so, and click on the Allow, Allowed Devices Only button here. Then go back into More, and click on Allowed Devices. Then click Add in the top, and it will ask you for a device name and a MAC address. To find the MAC address, what you want to do is in the set is in the uh, setup area of your D uh, your DS. Is head to the options, and then click the System Information button. I'm not going to click that because I'll put my MAC address on the screen, but it's in there. It's uh, very obvious. You just copy what you see in there onto there. And then it then your DS will become the only device allowed on that unsecured connection, which will go a little bit of a way to <laughs> to s securing an unsecured connection, shall I say? But anywho, so once you've done that, click the OK button. Obviously, I'm not going to do that because I've already got it there, as you can see. So now, once you've done all that, click back at the top, 
uh, I hate phones, click back at the top and then back again. Okay, maybe not. Again, I hate phones. Right, back in the mobile hotspot settings. I know what I'm doing, I totally know what I'm doing. This is a professional tutorial and I don't want anyone saying otherwise. So, once you finally find out where you are, <laughs> get back to this, set, get this screen here by any means necessary and click this little toggle to turn on the mobile hotspot and click OK. Now once you've done that, I'm going to lock my phone and put it to one side because it doesn't get signal in my lap. Back on your DS, obviously. Go into your Nintendo Wi-Fi connection settings again. Select a free slot, and this time you want to do manual setup. Click edit on SSID and type in whatever you put in your phone. On mine it was DS test, so I'm going to type that in exactly as it appeared. Click OK. Click OK again. Web key, leave it blank because there isn't one. Go down to the DNS, do the usual shenanigans of entering in the one from the description. I'm just going to quickly do that now. And then do a test on it. If that's gone according to plan, that should test successful. And with that, you will definitely be able to connect to the server. But the reason why I'm not so keen on this method is that uh, whenever I do this, I can't find opponents. Like, I, can, I have trouble connecting directly to other players. So although I could talk to the server just fine, I can't play against anyone. But, again, that could be my 4G that's to blame. Maybe it's better for other people. Maybe better other providers have better coverage than what, I do, than what I've got. Who knows? But either way, even if it doesn't allow you to find opponents, uh, this will still be useful for things like the uh, GTS from Generation 4, because... When, when you're playing on the GTS on Pokemon Diamond, Pearl, Platinum, Heart, Gold, or Soul, Silver, uh, and you're trading with people, you're not actually connecting to them, you're just talking to the server the whole time. So, there is still some method to showing this, uh, to showing this approach, so, yeah. Hopefully that's useful, uh, that's useful for people who don't have that old equipment standing by that can, that can, ha that can uh, just get them onto their home internet connection. Remember, of course, that this will use your data. Uh, but DS games really don't use an awful lot of data to convey uh, what or bandwidth to convey what they want to the server and to other players. So you would really need to be playing hours and hours and hours to make a dent on any kind of plan. So, yeah. Anyway, with that in mind, I'm going to show you a couple of demonstrations from from the two other games that were sat on my sofa, and then I will call it a video. Alright, I'm going to first of all connect up to the GTS of Generation 4 on a Pokemon Diamond cartridge. Let me just adjust this for you so it isn't so ridiculous. Does anyone recognise this recording technique? I might have used it in a few videos in the past. But the cool thing about the GTS servers that are set up, these ones are not actually run by WeanFi. They are just they are run by uh, a separate group. But WeFi is willing to relay to them, so they have a website that you can go on to see every single Pokemon that's off for off, up for offer right now. Yeah, it's like super smooth, really quick. As a test, I put up earlier a Vagan, and I'm requesting an Eevee. I don't know if that's a fair trade, but if anyone wants to accept it as a proof of concept once they've got their version working. Yeah, that's great. You can have a free bagel. It looks like an egg bagel that wasn't necessarily very very good. But yeah, this all works as, as expected. I've been testing this. No problem whatsoever. So, GTS is working fine on both Generation 4 and Generation 5. Uh, yeah. Now I'll just quickly swap over, swap over to Generation 5 to show you some of the, some of the features that that, get, that that game has to offer. Or those games have to offer, sorry. I know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I'd love to disconnect. Alright. Right, when it comes to Pokemon Black uh, Black 2, White and White 2, the random matchup section is not working and stuff like the game sync isn't working, but GTS battle videos, the GTS and battle videos are certainly working. Not sure about the musical and the Wi-Fi club definitely works. 
So you should be, you can do direct battles over via the Wi-Fi club. And presumably do the voice chat and whatnot, but I'm just going to show you the battle videos section because uh, the custom GTS also has a section for battle videos that works perfectly. And this time I should be connecting up over our WPA connection, not the unsecured one, so this is a brief proof of concept on that one. Even though I never showed that at any point in the video. I'm so professional. I mean, the signal strength is higher because this router is right, li right, literally right next to me. So, but yeah, let's just quickly do this. Get the lowest, newest thirty videos, and you can see there are a bunch of them here. I'm just gonna try to scroll. Ah, uh, you, this old, old-fashioned. You need to actually scroll in the direction you're going, not the direction opposite to where you're going. Yeah, this this all works. You can just randomly select videos and watch other people who have used WinFi or Alt WFC or any other service to play online battles or whatever. Yeah, all features are working as expected in terms of that. That was one hell of a sentence. And I think I should quit while I'm ahead. Okay, so that's all I wanted to show you for now. Ooh, I want to turn down the volume, but that's not easy on a DSi. So thank you everyone for watching. I hope this is useful to various people. I hope people get some use out of uh, some. Yeah, I definitely hope people get use out of this because I'd love to see the DS scene of uh, Wimpy expand. I would also see, like to see that custom GTS get filled up with Pokemon. So use it. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching, everyone, and I'll see you all again next time. Farewell.